Okay, today we're playing a game on Hollywood. We're in the gold SR range and we will be playing Zarya the entire way through. And our current team composition is Reinhardt, Zarya, Reaper, McCree, Anna, and Moira. First reason to be sad, no Hanzo. Sad these days, especially if you have a Zarya on your team. Secondary follow-up point, no Zenyatta. Sad because if they have Hanzo and Zarya, you want to have Transcendence so that you don't just lose that team fight. Season 10 is a... Uh, a very complicated beast, as you can see. Anyway, other than that, there isn't much to say about it. That's just basically how it is right now. So, we've got to defend Hollywood first. We go pretty far up to get these opening shots in, and I'm not opposed to, like, going up there to try and get some extra charge, but, like, but, like we go, like, real far up. Like, this far up is quite far up, and we, like, almost die for it. Def it's not unimaginable we do die for it. So as we can see, they've got a dive composition. They've got a Winston even. Winston in season 10. Those madmen. So, not to spoil the surprise or anything here, but uh, the gist of this fight is basically, like, get fucked. Like, we lose Reinhardt and McCree immediately. So that's already a bad start. And then... We kill Hanzo, but then Hanzo gets rezzed, and like, oh god, Moira built up Coalescence really quick, so that's cool, but by this point we're already missing half of our team, and there again she's about to use Dragon Blade, he's using Dragon Blade right now, in fact. We got a lot of charge, so that's cool, but like, we're gonna die. Like, really, I don't, we shouldn't even really come over and like, get this health kit, because like, watch this though. Ah, fuck it goes Moira. <laughs> Uh, like, really, we should have probably just died sooner, because we were going to die. And, to be fair, I suppose we got more ult charge, we got like 20% ult charge off of killing Hanzo, but like, at the same time, we were gonna die. If you know the team fight's gonna be lost, you basically just wanna die or leave as soon as possible. If you can leave, that's ideal, but if you can't get out realistically, you just wanna die faster so you can regroup with your team. So again, we go like really far up right there to try and like poke through that doorway to try and get some damage in. Uh, we put the bubble on Reinhardt, but like, there's no point to. You can still get charge off of Reinhardt. That's sh that's true enough. But like, there's kind of no there was kind of no one really in sight except for like maybe the people in the room if they stuck around to get any charge off of. So we didn't get much off of that bubble, and the bubbles have a really long cooldown. Just like, general thing for Zarya, usually bubbling someone in anticipation of them taking damage usually ends up in you take- get it in them not taking any damage because the person just went, Oh, the bubble's there, hold on, hold on, alright, now I'll start firing. Usually it's better to wait until the person starts taking damage and then put the bubble on them because the, per the person isn't going to react frame one to you putting the bubble on them, right? They're always going to shoot it at least a little bit. And uh, it's harder to stop yourself shooting once you've already started than if you haven't already started. Um, so you'll, you'll always get some charge off of it, though, just because they won't immediately react to you uh, putting the bubble on. So you'll always get some charge out of it. With yourself, it's a little bit simpler because you can just put the bubble on yourself and walk across a line of fire. But putting the bubble on the other people, it's usually better to wait until they start getting shot at and then putting the bubble on them. So we have Graviton built up right now. Um, push tab more often. Like, I know we're currently fighting and everything, but, like, push tab regardless, because we have Graviton right now, so we really want to see what people are at, ult percentage-wise, because if somebody, like, if so, like Genji's got his ult, or close to it, what's Genji at? Is bit 70, 67%? Yeah. Then you want to know, fuck, he's got Dragon Blade again, goddamn then you want to, like, know, just, like, push tab frequently when you're playing Zarya, because people having that, knowing what people's ult charge is, is important for you. So, Genji just killed two people with Dragon Blade. We killed Winston, but also Moira's dead right now. We shouldn't be going up currently, because we need to wait for our team to regroup, because half our team are dead right now. More than half our team are dead now, because we, Genji just died as well. We shouldn't be this far up. We're just going to die for nothing. We got to, like, back up and wait for our team to regroup. Zarya, like, you'd... I, all heroes, right? Like, you need to wait for your team, but, like, Zarya is, like, really dependent on having people around her. She's quite a supportive tank. One of her abilities, frankly, just does zero things if you don't have a teammate with you to put it on. So, like, we just, we just need to be back out. We couldn't be that far up in the street while most of our team were dead. 
So Genji has Dragon Blade right now, and he's using it. And we chuck this down, and, like, it gets more people than it looks like it's gonna, honestly. Like, I was about to complain, but surprisingly enough, it actually pulls in four people. So I guess that's me shown. Uh, Winston uses Primal Rage in it, which isn't recommended. All that happens is he wastes his ult and still dies. Um, so... It, it didn't look like it was going to get that many people, but it did in fact get four people, so hooray, we won the fight. That's just how Zarya is. Now we're at zero charge, so we've got to work to build charge back up again. This is how Zarya is. We've got to, um... We've got, we, you start at zero, you gotta work on building yourself back up to being the best hero in the game. Because when you're a high charge, you're the best hero in the game. So we tried to use our bubble to get some charge off of Zenyatta, throwing some shots in. Didn't really amount to very much, you know. <sighs> Sir, like, if there isn't a Junkrat on the enemy team, it's really hard to just, like, put the bubble on yourself and walk into some bullets, you know. So why is our other bubble on cooldown? Who did we put that on? Eh, I'm not super stoked about it, because Winston doesn't exactly give you a lot of charge. I don't think he can even break your bubble before it wears out, so, like, you're never gonna get full charge off just a Winston. I'd rather just save the bubble for, like, when somebody isn't fighting a slightly more hazardous foe. It's like, yeah, you'll get some charge off of Winston, but you aren't gonna get a lot of charge off of Winston, you know? Whereas if we had been able to put the bubble on, like, Genji, when he dashed right into the entire enemy fucking team right there, that would have probably gotten us a full charge bubble right there off the spot. On the spot, rather, but... Um... Look at that, we've got rat fucking 500 health right now. Zarya is, like, the best hero in the game to have a Bridget on the team with, because, like, fucking just have 100 armor just underneath those shields. Like, look! I'm a real tank now. Incredible. So, Bridget went off and got herself fucking murdered, so that's very helpful. Don't wanna bu don't bother bubbling Genji right there, because, like, he's unlikely to take much damage, if any, so that bubble ends up doing basically nothing. This is, like, what a lot of Zarya revolves around, right? Like, Zarya herself is quite simple to play. Hold left-click on people when they're close to you, and spam right-click when they're far away from you. If they're hard to hit, or there's a lot of people, spam right-click regardless. Um... And then Graviton people. The whole thing with Zarya is that she's in, she's like basically entirely about game sense. She has a very minimal gameplay requirement. It's all about actually like bubbling people well. Alright, right here. Yeah, this boy's doing stupid shit right in front of the enemy team. He's gonna get us a lot of charge right there. Easy money. But like the Genji who's flipping around, like flipping around, moving back away from the enemy team, eh, he's probably not going to get you so much charge unless somebody's already like damaging him. So Reinhardt died. How did Reinhardt die? What? Well, I mean, he was doing stupid shit a second ago, so I really shouldn't need to ask that question, should I, in hindsight? We bubble uh, Moira while she's using Coalescence. Again, like, unlikely to get that much. Like... People have this thing where they don't focus Moira when she's using Coalescence, unless they're a hero with crowd control. And, like, the Moira is probably far away and trying to not get hit, so, like... Unless you... Like, it's not really worth doing unless you think somebody's gonna crowd control Moira, right? Like, if you see a Bridget or a McCree moving their way up to her, it's not really worth putting it on her because she's probably gonna be fine. Like, it's unlikely that she's gonna die using Coalescence, so you're better off just, like, waiting to put the bubble on someone who's actually gonna take some damage, rather than the Moira using Coalescence. Uh, unless you see somebody with crowd control coming up to try and kill the Moira. So, uh, why is our bubble currently on cooldown? Because we obviously we want to put it on Reaper right there, so, like, what do we do? Uh, again, we just put it on Moira, like, when nothing's really happening to her. Like, for all I know right now, she has Fade. Did we see Moira use Fade at all? No. No, we did not. Um, like, she, she's just, like, not... Turn allied health bars on, also. Um, she's just, like, not in peril right now, and, like, Moira's got Fade, so it just doesn't... It's not... Unless somebody... St again, unless somebody starts hitting Moira... 
I'm not going to put the bubble on her in that situation because for all I know right there, I'm going to put the bubble on her and she's going to immediately use fade and I'm going to get no charge off of it at all. Because, I mean, this is the thing with Zarya is that like, ultimately, we're trying to build charge with our bubbles, right? Because you have to get to high charge on Zarya because so much of Zarya is based around being high charge. We bubble ourselves like super early. There's no point using the bubble right here because like Tracer's definitely gonna recall in the near future. She's almost dead. So like we bubble right there while she's when she's about to use recall. No, they're like it's, it's gonna end up getting no charge, which we don't want. It's like you know Zarya is uh, this. She's based so much around being high charge, right? Like. You don't, you need to be high charge because otherwise you don't do damage. And Zarya needs to be able to do damage to actually create space because this is what Zarya does, right? She blocks damage for her team by using her bubble, yeah. But the way she creates space is being an extremely threatening person, right? Like when you see fucking the neon Zarya moving towards you, you're like, oh fuck, please do not put the laser in my mouth. So like... So much of it is based around being charged. So, like, really, when we use the bubbles, we're always trying to get 40, 40 charge off of it, if possible. Obviously, you won't every time you use it, but we're always... We want to get some charge off every bubble we use, because they've got long cooldowns. These are long cooldown abilities, right? We, like, yeah, we want to keep people alive, but we also want to get charge. So, like, a lot of it is, like... Ideally, like, you use it on somebody who... Like, right at the first fight, you get to use the bubble on yourself to absorb a bunch of damage, and then somebody, like, does some stupid shit or commits to the- engages the fight, and you can put the bubble on them, and then bam, A charge right at the start of the fight, and then you win the first fight, and you've got- like, that d d dictates so much of the game. So, like, this looks fair enough, honestly, it's just, unfortunately, like, they just barely get out of the way of it, because it looks like we're in good shape to get three of them, but we just- do it a little bit too slow, and I like, don't fire it enough off to the side, so we end up only catching Genji with it. Um, it looked far- it looked fair enough, we basically- it, like, we just didn't catch the people with it, but we were in a position to catch three people with it, so... Uh, aim better is basically what I'm saying. So, anyway, it doesn't really matter, we, like, they lost Genji out of it, if nothing else, and then we just went around and beat some people to death, now we're at pretty high charge, but... They're regrouping, so we're gonna end up losing a bunch of this charge. We used our bubble on Bridget for no reason. Nobody was actually shooting at her right there, and, um... We're always looking to try and get some charge, but, like, Bridget didn't look like she was gonna get shot anytime soon. Right there, it's fair enough to put it on her, because she's standing in front of the fucking gate in front of most of the team at this point, so... Yeah, she ends up taking some damage right there. Uh, we bubble... Who do we put that bubble on? Who's, like, way the fuck in there? It didn't go on Reaper. Who is all the way in there right now? Oh, it's Bridget still. Okay. Yeah, she went way fucking ham right there, and we got a lot of charge off that. So we almost have Graviton again, because we've basically just got to have, like, 1.5 team fights at full charge, or high charge. So, we built up a lot of fucking charge, and now we got Grav, and, like, yeah, fair enough. Like, I was thinking I would have chucked it sooner than that, honestly, just, like, to stop Bridget from touching it. But, like, yeah, fair enough, we done it. Um, so, so far, Bubbles not great is basically the moral of it. Like, we have been walking around at, like, not super high charge for quite a bit of this game. And getting to high charge is a very important aspect of Zarya. The other important aspect of playing Zarya is landing Graviton. Who would have guessed, right? It's just... If you're low charge always, you're not threatening, so you're not creating space, and because you're low charge, you're also not doing any damage, which means you aren't building up Graviton quickly, and that's how you win games, Azari, you get to high charge, you farm Graviton, and then you get the entire enemy team, and then Hanzo kills them all, and you give him play of the game, and then when you watch the play of the game, you're like, I actually did this, but you know, whatever, that's cool, Hanzo, yeah, you were there, I suppose, you held... You put the cursor over my ultimate and pushed Q, so that's great. Great job, team. So we tried to put the bubble on um, Reinhardt, but somebody got in front of us right at that moment. They have a Junkrat now, which is great news for us, because it's real easy to get a lot of charge off of a Junkrat. And, you know, we're going to walk forward and try to do so. Uh, do, like... 
one thing to note is that, like, you've got to try to bear in mind how many shots Junkrat's going to fire, right? Because he fires five bullets. We see two bouncing in front of us right now. That could be all the bullets that are coming at us right now. Like, that's... Bare, like, half of his clip has been fired, right? So, at bare minimum. So, if you if you end up, bu like, only bubbling one Junkrat grenade, that doesn't actually get you much charge. The It's the seeing, like, multiple grenades bouncing towards you and then walking in front of them. If you turn around and see that, like, two have already hit the ground, no more might actually come. So... Maybe wait for him to reload and start firing again at that point, because then you can just walk in front of all five grenades and like, oh yeah, all the charge, it's sick, eat free, free money right there. It's free real estate. So Zen's almost dead. We uh, decide to like try and uh, bomb him right at the end there, but like honestly, like I just walk around and keep lasering him. The thing is with using the grenade is that it uses up a lot of your ammo to do it. it uses up a quarter, so. If you can kill them without using gr the grenade, that's better because it's just more ammo efficient. And like Zenyatta, not a hard guy to hit, right? Like literally a floating cube is his hitbox. If you were trying to burst like a smaller target like Genji, fair enough. No guarantee you'll hit him with the laser. Zenyatta, he's easy to hit and you it's just more ammo efficient to laser him rather than right clicking him. And he ends up dying regardless, so that's, like, another thing. But, you know, if they're hard to hit, that's fair enough. But, like, if you can laser them, that's better than right-clicking them because it is, it's just more ammo. It's most more ammo efficient. Um, so we're, like, sitting real far back right now, and we can go up. Like, most, like, most of their team is dead right now. Half their team is dead when I start saying that, but, like... We, like, yeah, we are low. We're, like, half health right now, but, like, so many of them are dead. We could just walk forward and keep fighting. Like, we're gonna win the fight, and we, like, back way the fuck up. Um, we could we could just walk forward and keep fighting at that point, even though we're, like, half health. It's like, eh, who's left, really, you know? So, tire's coming. We can hear it coming, so we're ready to push the button on that man. We push the button on that man. Oh, no. He ended up, he's killed Genji regardless. Like, we don't see the bubble, the tire when we put it on him. It's just like, it sounds like it's getting close, so we just, like, put it on him. You kind of want to see the tire before you actually want to, like, put it on somebody. Unless you, like, know it's going to come around a corner right next to you. The Junkrat is probably not going to send it through the cafe on this map. So, like, that's probably not going to, that's not an issue. It's, uh, you, you kind of, you don't want to know where it's coming from. Because we put the bubble on in Genji right there, and it's like, oh, well, it didn't actually, like, even come into line of sight for another second, you know? So, anyway, it doesn't really matter. We captured the checkpoint. We got full, we got uh, half charge right now, but we got to wait for the payload to push up pretty far, so that's going to take a while. No reason to bubble this person. She's in the doorway. She's not going to be getting shot anymore. Uh, like, if she was still making her way across the gate, across the, uh, street, that's fair enough. But no, nah, she was, she was in the room when we put the bubble on her, so that's not gonna end up doing very much. Putting the bubble on that man predictively, and he ends up taking no damage and giving us no charge, and then, you know, we would really like to have the bubble right there to put on Farah, because she actually uses Barrage, and the fuck, that's some free charge. If the, if somebody's gonna use their ultimate, especially an ultimate like Barrage, putting the bubble on that man will get you a lot of charge. So I'm going back to see when we heard Deadeye. Yeah, like, right. We, we would have used the bubble one way or another by that point, because, like, we would have probably put it on Farah if we hadn't already used it on Genji. Using it on Genji was, like, the worst option, because nothing was happening to him at the time. We couldn't really see anybody, so it ended up getting us no charge. Sad mon Sad day. Sad money. Sad lack of money is, you know, more of it. Who do we put it on right there? And we put it on that man. Like, he's close to Reinhardt, but again, like, it doesn't look like anything's happening to him, you know? So, again, we just put it on this man, like, hoping he takes damage, and he ends up taking no damage. So, these guys are coming out this way right here. We grab them. And Genji is currently alive, correct? Our Genji? Yeah, he's over... He didn't die. No, he didn't die. So, you know, 
For, he said his, he pinged that his alt is almost ready, So and these boys are over here by themselves, so we throw it on the ground. Unfortunately, it doesn't end up doing that much, but it was a good group of targets. It's just our team didn't actually capitalize on it, so that's sad, basically, but it was a fair enough time to use it. Like, we caught Mercy, McCree, and Winston. It's just team didn't capitalize on it, but it was a fair enough group of targets. Farah was dead, but, like, everybody else was in the area, so, you know, just kind of sad. Uh, where do we put our bubbles in here? We bubbled. I get, like, nothing's happening to him. Like, Winston dies before we put the bubble on him, and, like, there's there's nobody else really around when we put that bubble on him. Uh, Reinhardt comes out right now. We'd much rather have our bubbles right here. But, uh, it's like nothing was happening to him again when we actually put the bubble on the dude. If something's not already, like, if nothing's happening to the guy when you put the bubble on him, you've got to be pretty sure something's about to start happening to him, right? Like, if Genji pulls out Dragon Blade and dashes in, or Farah starts using Barrage, you know, or, like, uh, you see the enemy Genji dash up and pull his Dragon Blade out. Like, fair enough. You know, the dude is, like, gonna take damage in the near future. But, um... Uh... Like, if, if nothing's happening to them at the time, you've got to be pretty sure something is about to start happening to them when you put the bubble on them. Because otherwise, you just, there's just a chance that you get no charge off of it. And then you've got to wait 10 seconds to try again. And there's no guarantee you'll get any charge the next time you use it either. So it's just better to put it on somebody when they already have started taking damage, because then they will take some damage after that, and you'll get some charge out of it if nothing else, right? Putting it on somebody predictively, it's just it's just gambling, you know? Like, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. I find often, more often than not, it doesn't work, and you end up getting no charge, whereas using it reactively, dude's taking damage, dude's getting dove right now by people, then you always get some. And as long as you always get some, that makes it way easier to be Zarya. Because, and it, it's easy, again, it's easier with your own bubble because you can put it on yourself and a walk across a line of fire, right? But you, there's no guarantee that your teammate is going to be so cordial as to take damage so that you actually get charge off of it. So you have to be a little bit more inventive with the bubble you put on other people. Um, and so much of Zarya revolves around that. So, in the email also, um, you asked about, uh, bubbles. You also asked about reloads, and seemed fine, basically. Uh, nothing stood out to me as being particularly egregious, though I do also concede that that's something I'm bad at actually keeping track of when I do these things. Like, I basically never remark on that because I'm just, like, looking at other things, basically. It's like how some- I frequently forget to point out, like, Things that I consider to be, like, pretty plain, but is not plain to everybody, like, trying to stick near cover at all times, rather than just, like, walking out in the open. I'm bad at pointing that out as well. Like, am like ammo is something I'm bad at keeping track of and when we reload, so to be fair, I might have just missed it. We're good. Just listening for something. Don't worry, the spider's in the area still. Um, and any tips for my Ryan, like swing more or shield more? It's hard to say without watching from Reinhardt's perspective, basically. Like, nothing he was doing, like, okay, there was the one point where I was like, he's doing some dumb shit, which was walking into the enemy team, like, swinging his hammer, like, in the middle of the street. But, like, I couldn't, it's hard to tell what somebody else is doing, basically, unless you're, like, looking at them constantly. And, like, we didn't really see Reinhardt that much, which might say something about what Reinhardt was doing, but it's it's hard to know without watching from Reinhardt's perspective. Um is is basically the gist of it. It uh it looked like he was fine, basically. Like, we aren't even cute with the guy. Why did we say my Ryan in the email? Is this other email Reinhardt? No, this other email is not Reinhardt. That's very peculiar. Um like, I just looked at this guy, and he's we're not even queued with him, so it's very strange. Because usually when people say something like that, they're queued with the other person. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Hard to know without watching from the Reinhardt's perspective, basically. Um, so anyway, thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them. And I hope you found the video helpful.